Okay, sorry guys, looks like we're into a part two again. Um, okay, so some of these mushroom images, um, I've printed them onto tracing paper, which works really, really nicely, and use the paper in different ways. Um, this one I've stuck with um, this stuff, which is good because it stops it crinkling when you use a wet glue. Tracing paper does crinkle badly. So I think that looks quite unobtrusive enough to use. Um, and stamped some hand stamped lines on the back. Different colours again on the hand cast stamp. Um, and what I like about this, um, when uh, when my children were little we used to make comics and things on uh, using uh, Photoshop sometimes for the pictures. And what I used to do is offset the um, the image the color when you add in color on your layers. Sorry, I think my lights are flickering today. Uh, look at me trying to focus the paper rather than the camera. <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm getting a lot of flickering on my screen, so it's putting me off. But I don't know if that's going to translate to the video or not. You, you, it may be all right. Okay, so as I was saying, where the collar is not quite sitting properly in the um, in the space, I think it looks really cool. It kind of gives it um, a bit of a retro effect. So the the stamp that I made is uh, there. There it is. It's like that. So um, I went round the lines first with the and made the lines exactly like these lines so that when you cut it with the knife you're actually going to have a tiny bit of a gap as well um, so you can use the the pieces to add your different colors um, but I I do like that you don't have to get the, the little colored piece exactly in the right place and it looks quite cool so sorry about the rambling if you can hear the dog shaking herself, that's what that noise was. Um, so a little burlap pocket here. Um, this fussy cut, I've put this on black card, which I thought looked quite nice also. And I've put some gold around the edges. A lovely uh, vintage image there. And this is the thrush again, and I've made this into just a little booklet with extra pages. Like so. Library pocket, bees, bees feature a lot as well. Two cards here for bees. Uh, oh, yeah, the, sorry, there's a tuck there and a pocket there. Another library pocket there and some vintage botanical images. All got stamps on the back. And I've left the pocket empty because I like that it says Woodland Tales there on that vintage book page. I've used some of these lovely flower trims as well, looks pretty on the side of the pages. Some um, kind of Art Nouveau graphics from the Graphics Fairy uh, for the sort of elven feel. Um, I don't have a lot of elven stuff but uh, I've just used one or two pieces. Lots of stitching around the sides of the pages. More mushrooms. This this one I've fussy cut and put inside the tracing paper lines. A lovely countryside image. I like that you can write on this paper as well with the um, sky. Bunnies. A little um, birdie clip. And here, this little collection. First of all, thank you to Tracy Fox for showing me the correct way to, to fold this envelope up. <laughs> I'm the sort of person who um, buys appliances and five years later I'm thinking, oh, what? I didn't know you could cook food in that. You know, I thought it was for drying paper. So this is this sweet little envelope, very cleverly designed, but obviously I haven't read the instructions properly. So if, if you've had one of these from me, 
before. Um, this is the correct way to fold it up. Um, so I've put this with this picture to show you. This is from a countryside book and it just reminded me so much of Little Shire Folk. They could just be that. Not to want to insult Mr Benningfield, whose work I really admire, but um, she really looks like one, doesn't she? She's even got pointy ears. So I had to include her, and that's the couple there, and I've named them Pinto and Clementine Rosebottom. And they are the florists, because she's off to market with her flowers. And so I've done this as a little envelope with the top slitted open and some pretty green lace there. So there's the florist, so that's why I've put the um, seed packet there too. And um, for these uh, handwritten pieces, I've used my scratchiest dipping pen so that it gives a very uneven look and write very slowly so that um, it has this nice shire type um, look to it. It's not a smooth handwriting. I have a card later on that I'll show you later in the book. Mushroom pocket. Some of these graphics are from um, Beatrix Potter who of course we know from her children's stories but she was actually a, quite an important botanist as well and did a lot of work uh, of that type. Um, another embroidery, I'm just trying, trying to avoid hitting the lamp. Um, so I hope you can see some tiny mushrooms there, it looks very sweet. So I've done this on um, hand dyed fabric again. So this lady I've used because, uh, previously, sorry, in, um, because she kind of looked like a fairy queen. So I've put her in as, a, as an elf here. And I've made a little tag here with a silver butterfly. And used a couple of these little cards from the Enchanted graphics set because some of the ladies kind of look elvish on there and on here is a a silver elf leaf um, there's a couple of Chinese images because I really love their sense of space and the way they use the whole the whole paper but in a really unique way I, I'm not sure how to describe it but with her mentioning um, the way the client mentioned the things that she likes, I think that she will like those. So I think this one, you can probably see this idea a bit better that I was talking about the, um, the colours being off centre. Looks quite cool. Another mushroom. a little random envelope well that, that one's attached um, on a thingy hang on there we are so envelope to write inside and there's a little clue in his first name that's there and there's a tiny little trowel charm on there and um, thank you again to Tracy because this is her idea. Oops. Um, this pocket she's done like a kind of a. I'm sure that tucked in a before earlier. I might have to move that I think so it doesn't get crumpled. She'd done this stable door idea which I really liked. Um, so I've put in here. Um, little vintage card and there's a pocket here that I've left open here just so that not to restrict the space too much um, and a quote and another little fussy cut and some um, 
green silk on the end there, that's a magnet and that little flap opens with a ribbon. Some more bees and this little honeycomb stitch on the sewing machine. Handmade paper with little yellow flowers. More bees and pockets. This is a vintage Heidi, although to me she could easily pass for a little halfling child with her curly hair. And this uh, lovely leaf fabric idea again from Shana. And foxes, I believe little fox features in the, the uh, story. So the little storybook fox and another one of these enchanted cards. More mushrooms in tracing paper. So there's the hand cast stamp again in different colour combinations. Uh, little bees, this is a Beatrix Potter also. And inside, sorry, inside is a quote, some more pages, another little tag. And that holds in there with a magnet. little thingy and another little thingy there. Um, bookmark. This is a little folder. Where are we? Forgotten what's in here. I think just some mushroom cards. Yeah. These are also Beatrix Potter. On this page behind there's another thrush with some stitching. Put that, that way. Down here and up here. I use this tatty old fabric because it reminded me of a a halfling's waistcoat that's been reused. So there's uh, pockets there. More mushroom cards and I've used this fabric again, this organdy, to make a little pocket. And you can see how transparent that is. You can see my hand through it. It's really lovely. And I've done some little gold stitching around there. Mm, pockets and more machine lines. Sorry, not pocket. That's I think that's a poem in that folded up paper, and I've stitched around it to make it look like an envelope. Some more eco dyed leaf fabric. Oh, these came out very nice. Um, done some stitching on this page, just using this. I think a lot of you seem to have this stitch, but um, it's quite nice to put it together with just a straight stitch and just do a few at the top. I thought that came out nice. And these little sleeves. So I was saying that mushroom book that I found. Um, I keep getting distracted reading the, uh, the book pages that I've used. It's really interesting. Um, so I've left this blank because I didn't want to cover it up got curious mushrooms in here and all sorts of interesting information. A quote on here and another one here. So more fussy cutted mushrooms like so. So you could stick pictures in there if you wanted or writing space. Uh, quote, more mushrooms, more bees, um, a lino print, lino ink print, I keep calling them lino prints and they're not. Uh, some mushrooms, surprise, surprise, 
um, some stamped lines. I've drawn you a little donkey. I hope you like him. For the little farming aspect. That's the other side of the pocket. Well, the other pocket. And here's another one. I've printed this um, mushroom on tracing paper again. I really like the way that the, the um, graphics print these black and white graphics. And I've added to it um, some script from the graphics fairy. I think that looked really nice. And this is a tiny little um, seed packet. Very pretty. Uh, sorry, not seed packet. Um, needle packet from from oh no I've lost the name so I'll link it below anyway very pretty I think she's used a seed packet graphic that's why I'm thinking that there's a little butterfly page and I hope you can see this is in yellow but it might be difficult to see on the camera a little um the trail that the butterfly is flying which was just done on the sewing machine um, I included this graphic because it it felt like an adventure that they might embark on from the story and some little um, images in there on journaling cards um, this book has four signatures and um, the way I've done it is start each signature with the first line of a famous book. Um, so, not sure if I... Yeah, I think I did show you more. Um, this is the last one. Sorry, can you tell that my brain's getting tired now? Where are we? Okay. I've used this um, Klimt painting because it has such a lovely peaceful look about it and I've added some more vines and stitching around the edge of the page and this lovely dictionary definition this is something that the client she actually mentioned that she likes this so I thought that was a lovely word oh yes so here is the typeface that I've used and this is very kindly provided free and also this one on the back so I've just copied um, some of the handwritten pieces I've just copied from here and then that's one of my usual ones it's a vintage dictionary for fungus here handmade paper pocket and this again is um, Alfred Wainwright I think I called him Arthur last time I apologise another fussy cut and I've stamped some white lines on this black paper card I mean and this gorgeous image is by an artist called Lowell or Lowell of a beautiful riverside I'll just hold it up because it's quite a thick Book. it's getting difficult to see from the angle um, vintage music paper made into a pocket and these little cards are from the garden the graphic 45 nature sketchbook is it called I think uh, this little envelope I made from the mushrooms book again and not quite sure how I made it I think it started off <laughs> started life off as a bindle fold which I've shown you before um, which is what um, like an old-fashioned homeopath might have used that for keeping the powders inside it makes a, a tidy little packet so I think it started like that and kind of turned into something else so I might be able to do it again I'm not sure um, this lovely effect is from spraying the um, distress oxide with water 
So I like how that came out and um, I've only put a small card in there because I didn't want to cover up the writing, which let's see if I can show you. <laughs> so I thought the, um, t the text was quite interesting, <laughs> as you can see, and quite appropriate also to the stories that we're talking about, I have to say. So I've just glued that flap back there and then it has another flap um, which I've just stitched round. I just saw these at the shops this week so I couldn't resist putting one there. A little envelope here with a quote. So another one of these butterflies with the felt inside. I like how they've come out. The mushroom up there. Um, another vintage image. I think this one was from the old design shop, I think. Um, some more uh, pages. This is from that paper pack again. And that's a magnet. This is on that. Um, I always want to call it burlap, but I'm not actually sure what that's called. I keep forgetting. I've added this um, lady from the Six Swans because she looks like an elf type person. And this lovely mushroom stamp from Mackie Stamps. Um, two more cards here and I've done tracing paper again onto the black journaling card and stamped on the back with white. This looks pretty this one with the decorative stitch as well. So they go there and this is the other side of that um, Wainwright book so there's nothing inside that one it's just uh, an open thing. So that's the other side of the handmade paper and these are two more Beatrix Potter Oh, sorry, that one's a, a, a vintage encyclopedia. I think this is a Beatrix Potter. So beautiful. And more machine stitching lines. So I've done that as a double sided one. And this is the little um, embroidery that you might have seen on Instagram. Which, oh, sorry. Bash you in the head then. Let's see if I can focus. Little toadstool. And I think that's the last page. There's an acorn stamp on the back. And then I've done this um, big end paper again. I've put a little um, antique pencil here with a mushroom charm and this is my shop seal which is appropriately called Shire Wool and I think that that is it um, I'm just going to pause yeah I just paused to um, make sure I didn't forget anything but there was just the charms um, and I didn't I haven't used any beads this time I didn't want it to be too fancy because it, it wasn't very Shire like in my opinion so I've used a few charms um, so there's that elf leaf um, an acorn a couple of buttons there's uh, I've done this um, it's macrame I can, hope you can see oh and I forgot to show you my finger I decorated my um, my pointing finger, especially for you guys, <laughs> for doing this book. <laughs> I must have been in a strange mood, I think. So um, I've done a macrame rustic kind of, made it out of twine. It's about 30 years since I've done macrame, so I'm really surprised I remembered how to do that. Um, a little gold pine cone. Of course I have to do a mushroom in yellow, a 
um, there's that lovely bee charm with a bee dangle on it and another button with macrame. I wanted it to be more sensible charm wise not to um, frilly and lots of beads it didn't kind of seem right um, so what I've done I've put a little bit of green silk here to stick out the bottom and on the top and as you can see lots of sewing and stitching and nice things to play with and look at thank you very much guys for um, sticking with me and um, being so supportive as always thank you and wishing you a lovely week bye